Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I'm here with a fun Stamper's Journey project. Um, and this is with Spellbinders as well, of course. So the stamp set that I'm going to be using is the Bloom Burst. I mean, this is, it's a really nice size. I fell in love with the stamp set. <clears throat> it's just this one image, um, but it is a nice size. I mean, it can fill the front of your card. And what I'm also going to be using for today's project is actually the Fun Stamper's Journey Color Burst Color Pencils. You can see as I'm throwing that around. Um, just first time I saw these, and of course, um, with pencils, it always intrigues me. So I've already pulled out my colors, um, but they do come in with the two trays inside of the metal tin. Um, and what's really interesting is on the list, they give you colors that you can mix with these pencils. So it's very interesting. Um, so I was very intrigued. So I first want to stamp the image. Now, the paper that I'm using is the Arteza watercolor paper. Um, I had used it in a previous video, and I believe it is the premium watercolor paper. Um, it's the ones where you can get two pads, 32 sheets each, um, for a very reasonable price. What I like about this paper is it is extremely textured. Now, you may not like this paper, okay, because it is so textured. I mean, you will see it. There is, this is more textured than Canson XL. So you, you can just see it. You can see the lines going through the image as I'm stamping this. And I stamped this about three times. Now, I fully know that it's this textured. I do like that. Um, especially with what I was looking for um, when it came to this. As always, I put together my charts with the colors that I'm going to use for the project. I like to list the products, the pencils that I'm using, the paper that I'm using, just so I can show the blends and then, of course, the number of the pencils that I'm using just to see how they will blend. So, again, getting this close... Um, you can just see the lines in the paper. Now, here's a warning. I am showing all of the color with this. I've sped it up. Um, but if you don't like to watch coloring, then please move forward or please stop watching. Um, again, I will show everything and I will be Gabby. So, I will be chit-chatty. So, you can see... Now, what I'm going to use to blend my colors um, is my colorless blender. And you can see these colors blend very well. Um, they're very pigmented. Now, I have not done what I call a full test yet. Um, so this is actually the first time that I'm using these pencils in a project. Um, I kind of just dove right into it. I just kept on looking at this stamp set. I was in love with this stamp set. So I just grabbed them and said, okay, let's see what they can do on one of the most textured tooth papers, um, at least in my collection. <laughs> so, you know, I, I was very, I'm very pleased. So... I'm looking at it that if I'm pleased in that, I can only imagine what they're going to do on other papers. So I'll have a video on these pencils. They do also have a water pencil set um, that I'll be playing with as well. So I'll put a video together just on these pencils here. Um, okay, so back to the coloring again. I, I gab. I, I kind of go off. So... The colors that I chose, it's a it's a pretty big range. I'm going from a pink peach color all the way down to a an extremely dark blue. It's almost indigo. Um, and I just want to have these colors come through. Now you can see 
I am not doing any rhyme or reasoning with my coloring. I am just th literally just slapping down color. I'm not worried about where that color is going. I am not worried about how it's looking because the blender pencil is doing a beautiful job moving these colors. Um, just remember when you use your blender pencil, you're adding more coating, a, a wax coating. So you're filling up the tooth. So eventually you will not be able to continue to add pigment. So you, you want to remember that when it comes to colored pencils, you can build, 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 build. But when you do get to a certain point where the tooth of the paper is filled in, you start getting that super slick surface. You can see the sheen. You're not going to be able to add any more pigment. And the colored pencil is part of that because the colored pencils is pencils just that. It's it's a clear wax pencil. So it's going to add to that layer. It's going to add to the ability to add pigment or not. Again, I know that this had that this paper has a lot of tooth it may not be your cup of tea. But what I am realizing as I'm using these is you can just see this pigments moving. Um, which yes, I'm getting very excited. Yes. So, I mean, you can see, I'm just slapping. I'm, I'm literally just scribbling these colors down. And when I put that blue in the center, I mean, it just comes out. It really travels. I mean, very well. Um, so I will, again, I will definitely put a video again because I'm very curious on what they can do on the other papers. Um, that we use, whether it's Bristol cardstock, um, my Canson, um, or anything else like that, or my mixed media ones. So again, I didn't even need to come in with a white pencil. And one of the reasons is I did not go up to the edge as I'm adding the color for whatever my base coat is, whether it's the peachy pink, um, or whether it's the light lavender, I'm not going to the edge, but I'm able to draw it out to get a hint of the color. But again, it's not going to give me the full color. So I will have those white tips. Um, for this one, I did want the tips of the flower to be white. It would help to define it. Um, at least again, for me. So again, all of the way that I use my colored pencils is the way that I use my colored pencils. I am not going to say it's the correct the way. I'm not going to say it's the wrong way. I'm going to say it's the way that works for me. I do not, nor will I claim to be a color pencil artiste. Um, I just enjoy them. They're my medium of choice. So I could be using wrong terms um, by all means. Um, I apologize, but these are just terms that I use because it's what works for me. So when it comes to coloring, once I knew the pigment was moving the way that it was with the colorless blender, I knew that I didn't have to have a certain way that I was putting those colors down. I didn't have to worry about blending them onto each other or making sure having a certain layer down. I'm literally able to make these colors blend together and force it with the blender. Now that means I am using a lot more pressure with my colorless blender so that I can fill up the tooth so that I can make it somewhat solid. I didn't want it completely solid. Um, and that does mean have a sharpener close by. Um, and I did, there was a bunch of times where I had to use the pencil sharpener, um, for my blender. So, and, and that's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's what you have. Um, it's what we use. So when it comes to the leaves, as I said, for the flower, I went from a, a peachy pink down to, uh, close to an indigo blue. 
Now for my leaves, I'm using a very pale green and I'm going down into that same blue. I'm pulling that color down into the leaves. You always, that's why whenever I also use my color pencils, I pull my colors out and I put my set away. So I only have in front of me the colors that I'm going to use for this project and those are the colors that I'll interchange with. So because I wanted some shading, I used the dark blue. And you can see all of that sheen because that is how much I really put that colorless blender down. I use that large brush to get rid of any of the, um, if there's any shavings on there. I don't like to rub my hand across it because you can actually embed the pigment and smear it across. So I just use a fine brush. I, I've done that. That's how I know. Yes. So I just use that big brush. It's a great brush. I'm going to trim down my panel. The flower panel is going to be cut down to four by five and a quarter. And then I took a very dark blue cardstock and I trimmed that to four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I just wanted a very small border going around this image because when I do color pencils, I want that to be the focal point, but I do like to have um, that very thin border going around it. I'm using my two inch double sided film tape. Um, when I use a watercolor paper, um, it's, a, it's a thick paper, it's very textured. So instead of using glue, um, I actually use this double sided tape. It is not forgiving. It is a very strong tape but it does ensure that my piece will lay flat. Um, if I've watercolored or anything else like that. Um, and then I also do use it along with my liquid glue. I also use it to adhere my fun foam. I dug into my nouveau drops and I grabbed midnight blue just to fill in the center of my flowers to have that accent. Um, you can go with any color. I mean, again, it's, do we see, I believe this is a hyacinth, no, I forget what that flower is called. I'll have it in the description, um, but we do see them based on the acid level in the ground. They could be more blue, they could be more purple, or they could be more pink. I wanted to throw all the colors together. So that's our project for today. I do hope you enjoyed it, and again, it's a different look using colored pencils um, with, a, with the paper with a lot of tooth. But I do like the speckles that go through it. It's like you did a white splatter going across it. So again, I do hope you enjoyed this product. And I do hope you'll check out the Fun Stampers Journey. They are with Spellbinders now. Um, and they have many products to offer also within the mixed media realm as well. So they have stamps, dyes, um, embossing folders, stencils, and then mixed media, dye, inks, sprays, all fun, all kinds of fun stuff. So I know I'll be looking into it further. All the products that I used will be linked down below if you wanted to take the time to check them out. Also questions or comments, please leave those down below as well. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video for today. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe and make sure you tune in for the next. Here are a few other videos I thought you might like, and I hope everyone's having a great day. I hope you're having wonderful weather like we are. Make sure you take care and always remember what's most important. Always be creative. Creative.